So, today we are going to be playing with chemicals. I feel bad about living in America sometimes because in living in America, you have access to just about every chemical known to man at any time. You could just go to like anywhere to get chemicals. Um, but in some countries, they they really do, you know, kind of put the kibosh on getting cool chemicals like one, sulfuric acid. Wow, you know, no getting that in some countries. Um, I know because I get a lot of emails that saying, "Hey, I don't get, I can't get sulfuric acid." So today I'm going to be making a plating uh, copper sulfate mixture, and I'm going to be trying to use only chemicals that I know most people can get in just about any country known to man. Okay, so. Epsom salt. Okay, if you can get Epsom salt and some copper pipe, let's just do that, right? You're also going to need a power supply, however. Okay, so a power supply, 24 volt. Um, I would say you, if you could get higher amperage, that'd be awesome. So this is a 24 volt, 5 amp. I would love to see 20 or 30 amp though, but that's okay. It just takes longer. So even this is kind of underpowered. Um, okay, so back, you're going to say, hey, I have a car charger. Nope, not going to work. Okay. It's got to be higher voltage than amps. So need voltage more than anything else. Amp was, amps would be nice, but amps will actually increase as the uh, chemical reaction happens. So I'm going to dump this whole bag of Epsom salt into here and then let it dissolve in distilled water. So one gallon of distilled water to one bag of, and this is six pounds or 2.72 kilograms. So first goal is steel, some sulfate, and make some copper sulfate. Though not necessary, and a magnetic stir could be added to it to increase uh, the dissolve of this. So if you do have one laying around, it would be a nice addition. Okay, so now you're going to need some more water, distilled, and you're going to need a flower pot with a stopper in the bottom, okay? And what you do, you fill the flower pot with water and keep it to the point where it's got you know like a little bit to the surface what size flower pot you're gonna ask well you know um i'm gonna say that it doesn't really matter too much uh i would keep it i think that's a six inch six to eight inch i did do it with a larger batch it didn't work very well because the concentration ratio was just too low so i would say a six to an eight inch flower pot works out really well next you're going to need a pipe copper it has to be pipe water flatten it out okay this is a one inch pipe flattened out and that is going to go right there it would be nice if this had a little bit more space to it. There we go. So it has to go near the pot. Uh, reason being is the, con the conductivity in this thing is not very good at all. So it'll get better as the flow goes. But for right now, that's why we need so much voltage. And the another copper pipe. Okay, in this case, again, just this one doesn't have to be flattened. 
it just goes in the center of the flower pot. And to make it secure, you could probably maybe put a clip there, you know, so it doesn't tip over. It feels pretty secure. I mean, even if I put some weight on it, it doesn't feel like it, but you definitely do not want these chemicals mixing. All right, so essentially you hook up your negative lead to your power supply and your positive lead to your power supply. One of the best power supplies at home because it also measures amps. So I'm going to just turn this on. And you should see at 6 volts, I have barely 0 0.01 amps. So this is going to have to change. I'm going to need to pump up the juice. Essentially what I would love to see is 1 amp. Now I'm not going to see one amp at first. I'm going to see like really low amps. Okay, even turned all the way up to as far as this goes, which is 20 volts. I am going to see absolutely no amps. Now in here, I will see a little bit of a reaction. I'm going to see some hydrogen gas appear here on the edge of the pot and I'm going to see some a little bit forming on the copper. Alright, so as this reaction goes you'll see more and more gas appear and the amps get higher and higher. Seems starting to fluctuate. Alright, so four or five hours later you got this. You're starting to see your charge build up. Now it's at 0.5 amps. You're starting to see the liquid take hold of some of the Cu positive, and the copper ions are building up in the larger chamber and not the smaller chamber. This will get reversed after a while. Uh, what will happen is sooner or later, you, you could start seeing it right now, but not too much. So as copper sulfate builds up into the chamber, right now like all the sulfate is located here and it's being attracted into that chamber, right? And then it's mixing in with the copper to become copper sulfate. And it's also lowering the pH of that water. So eventually what you're going to have is a very low pH liquid with high concentrations of copper sulfate bring it right and it's a pure copper sulfate it's not like that crap that comes in crystals that you uh, that you go to dissolve in the water because some of that stuff has impurities we're talking like uh, we're moving ions just the ions itself over to that chamber and uh, no impurities whatsoever it's pretty sweet so it's a long process but Darn it, it isn't the coolest thing that you're ever going to play with. It just doesn't seem that way right now. Alright, it's the next day. I am well over an amp. And I have this beautiful blue liquid. Now, if you do this, you might have to refresh this every once in a while with distilled water. So don't worry about that. Let's say it's below that. Um, that's because it it's hydrated out, dehydrated out. It's uh, basically uh, got so hot that it got rid of the water. And then you add more water, but you'll see that it's first white as the magnesium goes back out of the chamber um, and then it turns uh, light blue like this. So You'll also see that your anode is probably black. 
some things that you don't have to worry about. So keep um, keep this up. Sooner or later, you can pour this off, but we're gonna have to check the um, pH factor of it to see what pH level this is at right now. All right, so let's check the pH of this. Do, 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 1.4, nice, 1.3, cool. Uh, not too bad, it's under two. I would like to see even lower than that. I don't know if I can get there, but let's uh, maybe shoot for one. 0.85 would be awesome. But let's shoot for one. I'm just gonna keep going. Right now, it does have enough copper in solution. Um, just needs that lower pH value. All right, so it's been about four more hours and I'm going to actually call it good. I'm going to dump this into that beaker over there and then I'm gonna filter that through a coffee filter. All right, so here's the liquid after everything, after I filtered it. So, beautiful. Very pretty blue. What I'm doing is just adding a wire to it and added an anode to it. And I'm just gonna push a very low current through it for a little while uh, to build up CU. All right, so just off the bat, you know, it's like it's a really hard plate, but it's really uh, jaggedy. So I'm gonna add some potassium chloride to the mix. And you know potassium chloride to be no salt. You can find it in your local grocery store. Um, if you are in a different country, I'm pretty sure they allow you potassium chloride. Uh, if not, you should definitely probably move. But um, trying to stick with the theme of, hey, if I lived in a sovereign country that doesn't allow anything, how would I make plating solution? Um, doing so, pretty good. Uh, in a pinch you could use sodium chloride which is salt. I want to eliminate the sodium out of it though so I don't want sodium in this. I'd rather do a pinch of potassium chloride and I mean just a pinch is all it takes. Now what you do is you add the potassium chloride, a pinch of it, to distilled water and then pour that into this. So it's only going to be a little, probably like Three milliliters, something like that. Something really small. All right, so I'm gonna venture into my kitchen and kind of show you, you know, potassium chloride. There we go, potassium chloride. No salt. And do, 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 do. it is located right there. Potassium chloride. Now it would be better to have food grade potassium chloride. Like this. This is better for you too. Because this doesn't have the additives where this one does. You can see that it has also sodium bisulfate, aptic acid, silicone dioxide, which is not good for your tank. So it would be better to have food grade where it doesn't have that. Get it off Amazon. Okay, so in the next part of the video, I use potassium chloride and Miralax. I'm going to detail this a little bit further. So you're gonna see me use it and, try and explain it, but I will detail it a little bit further before you get to see that. So I have one eighth of a teaspoon of potassium chloride in here, as shown what you just seen in the video. Um, I am adding about 25 milliliters of water. Okay. I'm also adding a little bit of Miralax. There's a dash. I would say another eighth of a teaspoon and you just mix that around and this is your 
carrier and leveling agent for your bath. So again, potassium chloride can be found usually in your on the Amazon. Miralax, um, you can find this, you know, this is a stool softening agent, as I said in the video, but um, I know this is in different countries because I've helped many people around the world find variations of this, so it's not hard to come by. It just comes in different brands, but look for that right there. Polyethylene glycol, 3350. So this is the mixture that I'm going to be using in the video. Water distilled, and I'm just pouring just a little bit of this in here. I just need some chloride ions. It doesn't need much. Cool. I'm going to let that set, and then I may try a test piece, see what happens. Right, Houston, we have plating. Look at that. <laughs> awesome. Um, now I'm going to cheat and add some brightener to it. So at this point, if you can't get brightener in your country either, um, that's another story altogether. Uh, but I'm going to be using a little bit of Rio Grande brightener. This is a small batch. It's um, This whole thing is like 250 milliliters. Just to give you an idea. It's, it, the plate is, it looks pretty good. It could use a little bit lowering into the water or liquid. But yeah, it doesn't look bad. I'm gonna throw some brightener in it and see what happens. All right, so the results are outstanding, really. Uh, it's got awesome texture, very cool, very shiny. Uh, that's because of the last component was the, the very brightener of it, but it would have grown that. It was just it would just be a little bit more salmony than that. So you wouldn't need this. You could do without it and just use a wire brush to brighten it up in a pinch. Okay, so let me kind of re go over something. This is something that you do for fun. This is something you could probably do if you are in a pinch. Like, let's say your country doesn't have sulfuric or hydrochloric acid readily available to you. So this was using no acid whatsoever. Um, now, there is sulfuric acid in this, so you would have to find an alternative to it. Uh, in some countries, they do have a thing called Lustro, which is an SPS, which isn't acid, so you could go that way. Um, yeah, just check your country for brightener. Some Most countries have brightener available in kits. Again, unneeded, just if you do want that shiny, shiny stuff going on, that's what you're gonna have to add. The waste of this, uh, you are basically making a lot of waste, which is magnesium hydro hydroxide. I mean, I guess you could make deodorant out of it if you wanted to, but um, you know, I would check uses for magnesium hydroxide out and there is a few things, and so there's a laxative, and, but it also has copper in it, so you can't do that. Uh, you could use deodorant, and it would be an antibacterial killer, and that would be kind of cool. But check, your, check how much waste that you're actually making with this. It's, it's a lot. So that's the only thing I would say. It gets it done. There's a lot of waste. It's very fun. It's cool to play with. Other than that, um, I would stick to the other method of making electroforming solution so you don't make so much waste. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed this little video. It was fun for me to shoot. It was entertaining, so have a good one.